Good tidings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Landy Lodge podcast. Before we launch this episode, we have some special people we need to thank, those special people being the sages of the lodge, those who donate monthly to keep the lodge moving. If you'd like to become a sage of the lodge by donating as little as a dollar a month, you can find a link in the episode description, be it whether it's on YouTube or any of the audio platforms. So, Thank you to everybody, thank you to the Sages of the Lodge, and thank you for tuning in. And without further ado, let's get on with it. Ladies, gentlemen, the Sikos, and the Normies, <laughs> welcome back to the Landy Lodge. Please have a seat, make yourself comfortable. This is going to be a very positive episode because we're feeling very positive lately about the topic at hand. But before we discuss the topic at hand, who's joining me? Who's joining me? Who is that? <laughs> Welcome to the Treehouse. <laughs> What's going on, man? How are hey, you? man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm just, this is, dude, what, what an absolute time to live. I mean, it's just, I mean, if you're a Zelda fan, you're hype. I mean, if you're a Pokemon fan, you just you, you can't get any more. If you're like you're a Pokemon you're, fan, you you gotta be on cloud nine right now. Oh yeah, you're stuffed. Like you are full. <laughs> you're, stuffed. <laughs> you're stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> like it started. It started with Pokemon Snap, where it was like, oh, right. You made the old new again. This is fun. What else you got? And right. you know, we were shown some things about Diamond and Pearl. We right. were shown some things about Legends Arceus. Mm -hmm. But after this presents just a few days ago, dude. Ooh, I mean, look, 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 look. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to play Diamond and Pearl. That looks fun. I'm excited to play it. But really, really, Re honestly, my, my focus is on <laughs> Legends Arceus. I mean, 100%. Come on. This is literally what we've been asking for for years for them years. to make it fresh make it right. new mix it up make it feel yeah. like an rpg again because yes. you know a lot of people got to remember like pokemon at least back during the game boy era they right. were at the forefront of rpgs yes especially at popularizing rpgs in the west so right. we've just been waiting for it's like there's nothing Oof. wrong with sticking to a winning formula but it's like when are you gonna try and and go for gold again right exactly because they have they've i think everyone's known that like they've had the potential to do whatever they want and, and they've the done money. whatever yeah and the money they're totally fine one thing is like when i saw i like i tried not to tear up because this is game freak like this these are the same people who made like red and blue and green and it's like I don't know, man. It, it was kind of funny because when Pokemon Snap came out, like you were you were talking about, it's like it's like, oh man, we need we need a Pokemon game that looks this good, but they're never gonna do it. And then little did we know <laughs> they've been working on this for they've a long time. Brewing it up in the kitchen for a brewing while. Brewing it up, yes, yeah. exactly. And it's like, you know, this is kind of, if I'm not mistaken, this is the this is the first mainline game where we don't have any other version. Like it's, it's just one. it's just one. They've never done that before. They've always had these double double games. It's a fresh start, dude. That's it's that's a fresh call start. a spade a spade. It's a fresh right. start. Yeah. There's no gyms. There's mm -hmm. no like Pokemon League. Like right. this is honestly, it's so funny because I feel like a lot of the times we glorify like futuristic worlds, right? Like tech. And it's like, how does Pokemon move forward? And I feel like we always try to think of like new gadgets, but I love that they were like, no, we move forward by going back. Back yeah to a time very like, true right we're very go true. back to a time where humans and pokemon weren't necessarily getting along like that right. was one of the things i loved about the trailer yes. is that like at night these pokemon will attack you and mm -hmm. you can black out if you don't win yeah exactly and and i know we we talked about you know pokemon coliseum before on, on past podcasts but but one thing you know i, I was replaying that and there was one part in the beginning of that game the pokemon actually hits you like it or it tried to hit the trainer mm -hmm. and i was like man how cool is that like they're actually talking about how this pokemon is like overcome with with like like by evil and it's trying to hit you and then my favorite part in that uh in this trailer was like pokemon are dangerous creatures and i was like let's go like let's this go. is yeah, yeah i was like this yeah. is good this is good stuff because like, like they are realistically yeah. they should be 
Right, they should be. Like yeah. if I'm walking to the local bodega and I bump into a needle <laughs> king, I'm shitting my pants. It's not exactly. like, oh, oh look, a, a giant dinosaur. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I, I just have one thing. I think it was in the movie Pokemon Forever. I don't know if you ever saw that. But that was when um, is that with, is that with uh, what's her what's the little green Pokemon Celebi? Celebi. Celebi. Celebi Celebi yeah it was with Celebi it's Celebi it is that one yeah and I don't know if you if you've seen the movie but basically you know there's a partner with Ash that's a you know a new character and that's actually a really old version of Professor Oak it's a young Professor Oak and in that when he's actually with Ash you know battling Pokemon he gets out the special Pokeball and it's like it's made of like just straight metal. It's like all silver. And at the top, it has like a seal. And when he let his Pokemon out, he kind of twisted it and then let it go. And when I saw that, I was like, dude, like even back then, I was like, how cool would it be if like we saw like a whole different generation of like the past? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they looked back at that movie and they were like, you know, this would actually be a cool Pokeball. And it's like, stuff yeah, we can too. work with this. We can yeah, work we can this. work with this. And one thing I'm really curious about is that I noticed in this trailer, they did show different Pokeballs. It's a little blurred. Like, you know, we see the regular Pokeball, but then there was one part in a night scene where you could see the Pokeball being a different color. And I was like, you know, how cool would it be if they actually made like, you know, you could throw a Pokeball like at any distance you would want to, but with like a heavy ball, what if they actually made it to the point where you have to be closer, right? So the mm. catch rate would be higher for a big you're like Pokemon. you're like shot putting it. It's like Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if they're going to get that detailed into this game, but it really looks like, I mean, the camp scenes, like, like getting hit by Pokemon, mm -hmm. like, you know, like jumping off a cliff and then a Pokemon catches you. I think they're... They're definitely going all in with this. And I don't know. I kind of want to thank Sword and Shield because it's like, I feel like the wild area, that's where people really started. Think like people have been thinking about this for years, but the wild area really. It was a prototype, bro. Let's, yes. let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. Wild, area, <laughs> wild area was a prototype and it worked. Yes, exactly. Because I'll say this. I'll say this. Like I've relatively just to put my cards on the table for people who are listening i played gen one to three each one of those games like three or four times mm -hmm. i skipped gens four five and six um mm -hmm. i think that's when i was a little bit more into games like halo and games right. of wars more of that era and then i yeah. was in college and i was a broke ass motherfucker so i didn't exactly have money you know yeah. and then i hopped back in gen seven sun and moon and now here gen yeah. eight sword and shield and i'll say this i'll say this Sun and Moon was all right. I thought it had a better story than uh, Sword and Shield. Right. But as a game, eh. Yeah. That said, post-game Sword and Shield, I must have put, I could, I could check on my Switch, but I think I've put 120 hours into that game. Yeah. And like, I don't care what anybody says. If you spend right. $60 on a form of entertainment and then you end up spending 50 cents an hour on being entertained... Yeah. That game did its job. Exactly. So, so there may yeah. have been janky things about Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. weak plot, you know, right. a little handholdy. But that wild area alone, the experience of just running yes. around and seeing the Pokemon in real right. time and capturing them, mm -hmm. that was so much fun. And I yes. fell into it head first. Yeah. And now that they're essentially, we're getting wild area the game. Right. Ex yes, it's like, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like... Um... Like it, it made me something I, I thought of immediately when I saw the trailer was like Game Freak back in the day, like they they were the company to push every console to the limit, right? So I remember like at least the, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know every, I was gonna fight you. I just want to say I was gonna no, fight go you ahead. just in case anyone listening feels this way. Yeah. But then I thought of N sixty four Pokemon Stadium. And I was like, wait, yeah. this had some of the best <laughs> graphics. Not only some of the yeah. best graphics, but you could insert your Game Boy cartridge into your controller yeah. and yeah. the N64 could read it. Like, exactly. yeah, no, that's pushing the console to the limit. Exactly, yeah. And if you even go back and look at co the Coliseum games on the N64, those battle animations, they're better than Sword and Shield. They're they're really fucking good, right? So, oh, yeah. I mean, there was, um for the 20th anniversary of, of Pokemon, they, they did these uh, short clips on their YouTube channel of mm -hmm. some of the creators who would pop on. And Johnny, uh, Janichi Masuda actually, you know, gave like a three minute video and he said, you know, my computer, when we were developing, 
Pokemon Red and Blue, um, it kept breaking down. Like he got he got his computer fixed like five or six times. And he said in that little clip, he said, if I never got my computer fixed, we may have never had Pokemon. And I was like, dude, that's absolutely insane. What a weird turn of fate. Isn't yeah, that's like that's huge. Because this is an international know? phenomenon. Like this right. is a hundred percent. As right. far as franchises go, it's the biggest franchise in the world. Yes, exactly. And if I mean, I know I talk about black and black and white, black and two, like black two, white two, but you know, that game came out when the 3DS first came out. So the 3DS popped out and Game Freak was still trying to push the game on on the DS. And mm-hmm. if you play that now, I mean that game aged really well. You know, the fighting animations are fast, like the interface is also fast, like all the little effects and details they put just in walking around. Like there's some route in the game where, you know, there's a snare in the background, but when you stop walking, the snare goes off. And then when you start walking, it goes back on. And I was like, it's, this is the game freak. Like I remember like really, they really do have pushing. it in them. That's the thing. They, they do. caught a bad rap the last few years. hundred percent. It, it, game freak does have it in them. To yes. Do this sort of thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this was like, this was maybe three and a half years ago, but there's some legitimate report saying that Nintendo is helping the Pokemon company make slash or Game Freak make a Breath of the Wild Pokemon. And everyone's like, that's not going to happen. And like, I looked at the article just the other week to like, just, just, or they, they like, have just a named developer is. on there. They have, yeah. they, 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 there's a developer. They took off the team and put him onto the Pokemon team mm. for this very reason. Yeah. Like, it's there. It's yes. there. And like, look, look. I, do, I think we run the risk of getting a little ahead of ourselves if we're going to call this the Breath of the Wild of Pokemon, just because mm-hmm. I'm going to say, let's not expect the map to be that big. Maybe it will mm-hmm. be, right? right? Maybe we do get a map that big and mm-hmm. that detailed with like that many like towns and settlements and and like ranches. Right. But let's let's temper, I think it's really smart to temper the expectations yeah. and not to push this up against Breath of the Wild 100%. just yet. Even though uh-huh. it does bear a lot of similarities. Very I think true. the thing that excites me the most about this game is that it, in so many ways, it's just like the anti, it's just like, I don't want to call it the anti-Pokemon game, right. but Pokemon games traditionally, it's like, you start here, you're going to go mm. to this town and get that badge. Then you go to right. this town and get that badge. Then you go to this town and get that badge. Whereas this seems way more open to you and your yeah. experience and your preferences mm-hmm. and where you want to go. I mean, there's a little there's a little bit of, um, how would you put it? There's a little bit of structure there, right? It yes. looks like there's this main town. 100%. And in this main town, there's this collective group of people who are trying yeah. to get to the bottom of what Pokemon are create right. a Pokemon encyclopedia and that mm-hmm. you're going to be working with them essentially to create that encyclopedia that'll become the Pokedex. Um, right. I love that so, so much because yeah. I feel like, and even though, let's be honest, the battles are the best part of Pokemon. It's, right. it's fun to battle. It's fun to compete. But mm-hmm. I feel like the world of Pokemon almost gets lost in that a little bit. Yes. It's like, is that why we're all doing this? Are we just doing... Like, and I'm talking mm. about the, the characters in the world, right? I'm not right. about us, the people playing the game. But right. It's like, are the characters just here to fucking have dog fights? Yeah, that, exactly. Is that what we're doing here? Right. Or right. is there a bigger mission? Is there something else going on uh, where we're trying right. to forge a world where man and nature can live in harmony? And that's exactly. the vibe I kind of get from this game. Yes. It's not just Pokemon making the Pokedex, battling the evil organizations. It, mm. It's it's an effort to make the world more harmonious. Because like yes. you brought up earlier, there was a line of dialogue they showed in the trailer that mm-hmm. said like, hey, Pokemon are, are dangerous creatures. Yeah. And it's like, imagine right. a world where that wasn't the case. Um, right, it's exactly. Just, it, it just seems so different. It's so different from what we're used to. And right. some of those bat, I got an eyelash in my eye, everyone, so don't mind me. Oh no, you're good, um, man. <laughs> but like those bat, like quick attack, right? The most yeah. vanilla boring move in the game. But the mm. battle animation for is, Quick Attack is dope. was yeah. so sick. It was like a ninja move. It was like yeah. a ninja jitsu. Like, <laughs> foo, foo. And I was like, right. yo, it's all it's, I wanted. It's super dope. Yeah, yeah. like I remember Rhydon like, just did that animation tackle attack. And yeah, I was just like, like dude, this is going to be good. The moves look so good. Right. And it's just like, this is, That's what, true. this is what we're after. And I love exactly. the idea that now, like, to catch a Pokemon, like, it's not as simple as, hey, you're going to battle it, weaken it 
and then you're going to throw the ball. It looked right. like, at least it was implied from this presents that every Pokemon is going to behave differently. That yeah. Pokemon, there are different approaches. Like there are some Pokemon mm. where you're going to take the Safari Zone approach, right? Yeah. Maybe you bait them and you make them feel comfortable. And through that comfort, you're able to capture them. But then yeah. there will be other Pokemon where, yeah, you're probably going to have to do it conventionally and battle them right. and weaken them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just. Right. It just looks like. The, the cat look the catchphrase has for the longest time been got gotta catch them all right mm, and this seems right. like the game where that is actually the point the yeah. point is not be the strongest go to the pokemon league be the best no yeah. this is a game that's actually centered around discovery yeah and that's just so cool to me man yeah exactly and it's like I hate to, because I'm not, like I'm like you were saying earlier, to be very wise about it, not saying this is going to be a Breath of the Wild Pokemon, you know, but I am pretty interested because they said in the presents, right, that this game and Diamond and Pearl, the remakes, aren't going to have any kind of battle modes. Like there's no, there's going to be no online competitive battle play. And they're actually going to be, that's still going to be just for Sword and Shield. And I think a big reason they did that is because Gigantamax um, is a huge thing in competitive Pokemon battling. And I think they're trying to keep that for now. So I really think this um, this Legends game is, you know, like very focused on the one player. And I do think we're going to have a very interesting story because even in the trailer, I forget, I forget the, I forget her name, but she looks just like the antagonist for the Gen 4 games, for the boss of Team Galactic. Like, mm. if you actually look up a picture of, um, I think his name is Cyrus from Team Galactic, he's doing the same exact pose as this girl that looks like him in the trailer. And I was like, that's, they got to be related. So, like, the town sign, right, the Gs okay, that are mixed together. I see, I see a little bit of what you're saying. I just mm-hmm. looked into it quickly. Okay. Right. So, I mean, this, this story or this town or this... We're, you know this old timeline i think we're definitely going to have some kind of like some plan from the past that involves um this this legendary god pokemon <laughs> arceus you know so i'm i'm really excited about that i haven't one thing i noticed in the trailer too is that for these wild pokemon i didn't see one single wild pokemon that was just flying in place so i don't know if i don't know if they're still kind of like ironing things out um but I'm just really happy they're doing this with Gen 4. I think if it was Gen 1, people, for one, would be kind of tired of that. And I think, two, their expectations would be way through the roof. Through the roof. And I think starting with Gen 4 is perfect because in Gen 4, you know, you have, like, you know, the god, which is Arceus, and then Giratina, which is, like, you know, the devil. And then you have all these other mythical-type Pokemon mm-hmm. that you can maybe find in the wild. So I think they're really doing a great job. Plus, you know, with the regular remakes... I mean, they're just leveling out the regular story. And then I know we're going to learn stuff about, you know, the new remakes from the past of of Sinnoh from this game. So they're Mm -hmm. planning everything perfectly. Um, But I was really impressed when I saw the camps in the trailer and stuff, too. So is that going to be like our new Pokemon Center? Or like, how are we going to like, is that how we're going to heal Pokemon if we're too far away from town? I think I think it's going to be if I were to guess just a resting mechanic like you you make a campfire and you sleep for the night and that sleeping for the night heals your pokemon Mm, that that would be my prediction um but just to play off what you're talking about now what i think you know which could be taken from you know what you're saying the story is going to be way more important to this game than the than previous titles oh yeah not for nothing again like i'm not shitting on it but Mm. like sword and shield and sun and moon those stories it, it's you know it's not yeah. anything that's gonna stick with me it's exactly. not anything i come away from like wow i'm a i'm a different and better person after right. that you know, it's not anything like that it does its job it fleshes out the world lets you do your thing right and that same can be said for a lot of pokemon stories at least yes. in the main gen titles even the the great ones like gen one and gen two mm-hmm. pretty basic stories nothing to write home about coherent right. makes sense gets the job done yes however with this game i feel like they actually need to make a story that like moves people. Right. And not moves in the sense that they make you cry. You know yes. what I mean? But moves you, makes mm. you think a little bit. You right. You know what I mean? And yeah. again, doesn't need to be any like philosophical awakening, 
Yeah. But take. I, I really feel like if this game really wants to separate itself and really feel like a fresh start, then the mm-hmm. story itself needs to really stand tall amongst yeah. its past. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you this because like, I know we're talking about like comparing it to Breath of the Wild and how we like should and shouldn't. But one thing I did think about that's, I think pretty fair is that, you know, in Breath of the Wild, you know, you have the temples and the champions and you have kind of those timestamps, but then I don't know how they're going to do it in this game. Like how, cause you know, in Pokemon games, timestamps are really like the gems. You mm-hmm. get one gym, you get a badge, you get stronger you keep going, you keep going. And I feel, you know, that's, I feel like that's pretty similar to like, you know, with the champions, like you find more temples, you, you level up and then like you find the other champion and then you beat them. So I don't know exactly how they're kind of going to be, um, what's the word kind of just like slowly getting you stronger. But I think we're going to get to the point where it's like you find a giant Pokemon and you just lose and you have to go back and train more. <laughs> I've got, but, I've got two type stamps for you. Yeah. I think one of them is going to be, cause look, this is legends Arceus. All right. So mm-hmm. like whatever we're doing, we're in pursuit of Arceus, whether our character knows it or not. Right. I think some of the timestamps will be, if I were to guess, right. If it's really mm-hmm. going to be nonlinear <clears throat> and you could sort of go your own way, mm-hmm. there's going to be like, let's for lack of a better term, call them clues. They could be Mm. runes, they could be artifacts, they could be whatever, but let's just call them clues. You're gonna have to find X amount of clues scattered throughout the world to find out where you can find Arceus. So I think ultimately, let's say you have to find seven of them, right? Mm. Those are your timestamps. And you could find them in whatever order you want. This is just a prediction, but you could find them in whatever order you want. True. When you found all seven that you can kind of like move to the next stage of the plot in the game. That would yeah. be my prediction. Another prediction I'd have is like, maybe you need to discover a certain amount of Pokemon before you can move forward, right? Because right. You're, re- you're building what's going to become the Pokedex, right? Yes. So maybe before you can move to like the Snow Tundra area, you have mm. to bring in 40 Pokemon for the encyclopedia. And it's right. only when you've brought in 40 Pokemon, they're like, great. So you've done your part in this area. We're going to give you a coat and some, some gear so that you can go yeah. travel into the mountains. You Definitely. know what I mean? Stuff right like that i think they might do yeah i mean that that makes total sense i mean because i think um one thing i noticed in the trailer is that when when you know this generation dawn was like dodging and then got hit by the lux ray if you look in the bottom right corner right in the middle is lucario to the left you have crobat and then to the right i think it was Rhydon. right so there you got three pokemon so i don't know if it's like if it's the more you progress, the more you're going to be able to hold more Pokemon. But I did see, and there was one scene, it's like you were maybe camping or sitting down with all six. And I was like, okay, well, it looks like we might be able to hold all six Pokemon, just like kind of the older game. So it's like they're really taking what they've always stuck onto, but they're just kind of just kind of adjusting it a little tweaking bit. It, yeah. Tweaking it, yeah, in the appropriate way for kind of the atmosphere of this game. And um, I just think, I think it's just so cool how the trainer, you can get hit during mm-hmm. the battles. And if you look closely in the trailer, kind of at the top, you kind of see this like black line come up. And I'm like, that's that's really interesting because I couldn't find anything else about like a health bar or anything saying like, when, when do you black out? When do you mm-hmm. kind of do that? So I'm wondering, is it going to maybe be something that actually comes on the screen? And it's like, the more like you get hit and the closer you're dying, the more you literally it covers the screen and you're going to yeah. black out. I know that's kind of pushing it, but that's the only thing I saw from, from this trailer. Um, but I, I just think they're, I'm like, I'm so proud to be like, like I'm proud and I'm thankful to like have been with game freak. Cause I've played like every single game and it's just like, I know some people are like kind of shitting on the trees and like how there aren't enough or, or anything. But I think this is like, this is the perfect step for what they're doing because I know people didn't like sun and moon, but the fact when they got rid of gyms, I thought that that's the first time they're really doing something. And Mm -hmm. for them, I'm sure it was uncomfortable, but now it's like, you know, you can do both. You can make the the regular remake and then just do something crazy like this. Um, So I, and it's, I just think it's crazy. We got a release date for this game. And so soon, so soon. Yeah. It's literally five months away. Right. Less than it's, half a year, dude. Like it's kind of, it's kind of surreal when you think about it that way. And like the fact that like Diamond and Pearl are what? 
three months away, right? It's a yeah. November release. Right. I guess we could talk a little bit about Diamond and Pearl. It seems like that's, uh, at least the marketing team is having like a redemption tour. Yeah. For Brilliant Diamond Shoddy Pearl. Right. You know, yeah, know definitely. You, you talked a lot about this on your streams. I don't know if you wanted to, you know, punch in what exactly they touched up. Yeah, I mean, I just think, see, the big, this has happened with Pokemon before but with Pokemon X and Y. So when the, with that was like the first time they were doing like a mainline game on a handheld that was 3D. And that moment, you know, people hated the gameplay footage and they're like, oh, this is trash. This is awful. And right. then, you know, a couple months later, they had a trailer and everyone fell in love with yep. X and the X and Y trailer. And it's the same thing here. And I think it's just for like, you know, developers and stuff too. They have a time to push stuff out and to advertise, but they're also, you know, on a timeline. And I think the Pokemon company should actually update their website for the Diamond and Pearl remakes because they still have they still the, the very, yeah, they, they still, still have the, the very, yeah, they have the old screenshots. Hey, hi, and, your boy. I do websites. <laughs> hit me up, Game Freak. I'll yeah, catch me you up. real quick for you. I was like, I'll do it. Just pay me a dollar or two. I don't care. I'll do it for free. But, um, yeah, it's like, you know, when we first saw the trailer, people were like, oh, the chibis, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, the, it, the graphics weren't the best, to be fair. But then when we got this OLED trailer, that was the first thing I noticed. They showed the Diamond and Pearl remakes and boom. Which like was a they... good catch on your part, by the way. Oh, Because people thanks. didn't catch on until this new presents. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it was like, that's when I when I saw, like when I saw the OLED trailer, I was like, they're going to do it. They're going to make this, they're going to make this game look absolutely beautiful. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I remember when they were, I mean, they say this all the time, but it's like Pokemon's always made money, but back then, you know, there were interviews saying that they went all out with gen four and I, I believe it too. I mean, like having a God Pokemon, having so someone evil, the, gen, the first gen I missed, but again, I was a, I was a broke college kid. Right. No. Wow. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people haven't played Diamond or Pearl, and well, like because um, it was it was the it was on the DS. It was their first right. like big. And not that the Game Boy to Game Boy Advance wasn't a big hardware jump, but mm. it was a little bit more compatible. Yeah. It was going from Game Boy Advance to DS. That was yes. a huge jump in oh tech. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's that's huge, and it's like not necessarily like you know the characters in 3D, but having these kind of 3D effects in the game. You know, back then that was huge. Yep. You know, and it's like I think that's when they kind of started to feel like, okay, well, are we gonna make 3D games soon as well? But um, yeah, Diamond and Pearl was like their big project. And so they made Diamond and Pearl. A couple years later, they made platinum. You know, they actually made the the fighting mechanic a bit faster as well. Um, and then that's when people platinum was like huge back then too. Um, but that was a lot of that time period was, I mean, that's perfectly normal. Like I know a lot of people who missed like gen four, gen five, then kind of came back for gen six or whatever. Um, yeah, I came back gen seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gen seven <laughs> was like a big first, thing. Like good job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, we were broke. Yeah. We were broke. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think they're doing a great job of correlating like the original game. And they said, you know, it's a faithful remake of the old games and it, it really is, you know? Well, um, I've always been a fan of the top down. Like, look, I liked yes. let's go. I liked sword and shield and all that, but yes. I wasn't big on the way those games looked. And I gotta be honest, I don't dislike the chibis. I think the mm. chibis make it feel, make the old feel new in many ways. Yeah. I would have, as someone who's now playing through fire red and leaf green again, mm -hmm. um, man, I, I, um, I wonder what they could have done with pixels. Like right. can you imagine like some real pixel artists going hard in the paint to like a Nintendo Switch pixelated <sighs> top-down Pokemon title? All I'm saying yes. is I hope that's what they do for the black and white generation. Yes. And not yeah. that the chibis don't look good and the battle animations look very good. The landscape design's awesome. Like yeah. when they showed them running through the towns exactly. and everything, look yeah. beautiful. Right. You know? Like yeah. uh, like it's there. Um I guess I don't know. I don't know. It's like I don't dislike the chibis. I think they look. I think they look good. Right. But I think they could have. If I could critique what I've seen, mm -hmm. that could have been done maybe a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. However, right. and I think mm -hmm. a lot of it. 
Here's my, here we go. I have one tinfoil hat. <laughs> I have one tinfoil hat there. Put it on, baby. <laughs> I you know what I need to do. I need to make a hat out of tinfoil and just like, here, it's that part of the podcast, everyone. Yes. It's that part of the podcast. You need every guest to have one too. Just put one <laughs> yeah, out. We can put it on for a second. I'll open a merch store and just start selling them. Yes. <laughs> Landy foil. Yes. Landy foil. The Landy foil <laughs> hat. Um, but anyway, let's put it on for a second here. All right. I think the real pe- reason people were mad is they wanted like a Nintendo Switch graphic Cynthia and they're not yep. going to get it. Mm hmm. Right. So the horn boys are just going to have to use their imagination because chibis aren't going to get it done, chief. Exactly. Right. They're not. That's my conspiracy. I don't think anyone's actually, this is Pokemon. Mm. Nobody's mad that we don't have top of the line graphics. I think they're just mad. Like, what do you mean Cynthia is not going to look like, like Breath of the Wild-esque? Right. (laughs) Huh? Yeah. That's a really good point. That's true. I mean, I'm Be- just fucking around, but I'm right. sure I'm sure there's some small faction of people punching the air right now. Oh, dude, it's huge. Like- yeah, because Cynthia is like, I mean, um, Iris She's the and queen Jen- of Pokemon. Let's just yeah, let's she is. Just oh call- my gosh, calling a spade a spade. Cynthia is the queen of Pokemon. Okay, she is. she's she's the, she's the Pokemon waifu, and this is the trainer who 100%. kicks everyone's ass. Okay? Right. Like, no one yes. like Red was tough. You know, Gold. All those but guys, Cynthia, man, they were tough. But Cynthia, this is the one where everyone's like nightmares yes Night- a nuzlocke right worst nightmare mm-hmm. is cynthia like right yeah 100 percent. and there's actually it's really funny i forgot I, I guess i didn't play it as far when i was a kid but last year you know when when 2020 happened i um you know i picked up pokemon black and white from this person who lives like an hour away played the whole game and then there's like you know in the after game you can explore this whole new area and then you walk into a house Cynthia's there. She walks up to you and she battles you. And I was like, I was getting flashbacks. I'm from not ready Gen for this. Four. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. It was so bad. And I was like, I was like, but I was like, dinner's ready. I'm like, hold on, Dad. I can't. I gotta play this real quick. <laughs> it's Cynthia, Dad. It's Cynthia. It's Cynthia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she's she's like so iconic. Like I loved all of her Pokemon, but whole holy shit, dude, she was absolutely powerful. And and yeah, it, you know. I, I kind of, I, you know, it'd be nice to get like a HD Cynthia and stuff. Too, and you but... will in the, and that's the funny thing. I think that's the joke of it all is you will, but you right. have to battle her to see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. That's really good. I didn't even think of that. Wow. Yeah, it's You'll get her, but only well, also, when she's you got, fight I got to say though, she has one of the coolest designs. Basically, put it, let me, yes. let me say this. Anyone dressed in all black, something about that always does yes. it for me. You know what I mean? For right. anyone's design. But then yes. to have like like the little furs, like uh, like it's just it's just a cool like Pokemon's cool. not something like character designs aren't their strong point. But right. They nailed it with Cynthia. Oh, they, they killed absolutely it. Absolutely yeah. nailed it with Cynthia. Right. Uh, it's like know? every time you see that, like they made it to the point where it's like, you're right, every time they see that iconic design, there's a you know, they everybody kind of shits their pants a little bit. But then it's also like I always hear the music. Every time I see here, the dun, 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 you know, and it's like it's so fearful and intimidating. But then she's not like like she's just there too, you know. So mm-hmm. it's yeah. Have you ever that... seen that? Have you ever seen that meme where it's like there's a hamster or something, and like he like drops his food, and then he I like has like that. okay, so there's this meme where like there's this hamster or it's like a jerk. I think it's a hamster. Basically, mm-hmm. he's like eating his food, but then he like drops it. And then it looks like he has this existential crisis because whoever's filming him, he just looks into the camera like. <laughs> and people have like dubbed that over with like nuclear bombings in the background. Like like he's having like PTSD. Yeah. His war days. I'd like to see somebody do that. With but then Cynthia. as he's looking at the camera, the Cynthia battle's going that on. That would be the amazing. Cynthia, the Cynthia music. And someone's probably already done it, but it's like, I got to. His music playing. That's yeah. so fucking amazing. That's like the fateful battle. Like, I don't hear, right. I don't hear about any other trainer battle that seems yeah. to have given players a harder time than Cynthia. And from the right. sounds of it, dude, it seems like Game Freak knew it. And that's yes. why they had that surprise battle thrown yes, in. Yes, exactly. That's, that's true too. Yeah, because because tech i mean you know everyone knows red red is just like like just respect bow down to he's red right he's, he's the, the guy. guy he's the guy right and then you know cynthia is like oh shit you know like right after red but then technically in gen 5 iris the champion she's technically the hardest champion 
in the games. Really? Yeah. I guess she's, maybe people missed out on that uh, era a little bit. I think it was black two, black two, white two. I'm I'm pretty sure she's technically the toughest Pokemon champion. Let's check it out. Oh damn! Yeah. She looks a little crazy. Let's check out this party. That's a wild getup, man. It's like a yeah. cat, a cat ear crown. Yeah, right. What's going on here? All right, let's it's check like out stars, our party. Stars in the background. What do we got? What do we got as a team? What do we got as a team? I want. To, oh my god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh bless you. I'm allergic to this shit. Yeah. Oh my lord! <laughs> I don't even recognize half of them, but they're all like terrifying looking Pokemon. Yeah. I guess I don't know this gen as well, but I know Drudagon. There's Lapras. Right. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. I think their level's pretty high too, and this was before fairy types and stuff too. Oh my lord, dude. It's something else. Pokemon's come such a long way. And mm. I, I, I'm glad they've made it this far. I, I'm really yes. rooting for Legends to go well. I can't wait for Me Diamond too. and Pearl just because it's a gen that I missed. So mm. I feel like playing it, I'll, it's like recapturing a part yes. of like my, I don't want to say my childhood because I was a little bit older when that game came out. But mm. like a part of my adolescence that like yeah. I want, because like I wanted to play Diamond and Pearl when it came out, especially because yeah. there was a Penguin Pokemon. And Penguins yeah. are my favorite animal. Oh, so, that's so dope. So you're, you're definitely going to get Piplup. Oh, I'm, uh, even if I do multiple <laughs> runs, I'm going to pick Piplup every time. Even if I yeah. do Nuzlocks, I will reset the Nuzlocke until right. my trainer ID lines up with Piplup. Wow. Um, it's, it's also really funny because, you know, it's like, you know, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legends, Arceus, and then also the Pokemon Company actually released on their website a giant Piplup plush. And I think they know Piplup is like the favorite. He's and the stuff man. Too. He's, He's the, the man. Penguin. And He's, dude, his yeah. evolutions are awesome. Is it Empoleon, his third form? Yeah, I think. I think that is Empoleon. He's the big emperor penguin. He's actually based off Napoleon, <laughs> which is yeah, crazy. Emperor, emperor. Makes yeah. sense. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's check this out. Let's check this out. Let me get their names. But yeah, I mean, how do you not? Piplup is adorable. Exactly. Yep, Empoleon. Like, look at freaking guy man. i know right Jeez. <laughs> what a beast absolutely i can't yeah. wait I absolute can't legend wait. dude do dude, you think they're you... gonna or go, go ahead. ahead what were you gonna say no you for you you're the guest you go no no i was just curious do, what do you think they're gonna do about like because in gen 7 they had like not really gym battles but they had like that was when like alolan forms like like forms of pokemon really came out and they tried something new like they did a lot of different forms of gen one pokemon and then of course they did it in sword and shield and now we're getting like different form pokemon in um, I'm, I'm arceus all, i want more of that i want yes. more of that like that growlith oh my gosh i want it like not yeah. in the game like i want it here like, yeah like, <laughs> yeah i literally was like how do i get this <laughs> i was like how do, okay how do i take you out of the game i will take care of you i will feed you like just <laughs> just get in here dude yeah no, Definitely. dude, I'm, I'm all for it. I think one of my favorite Pokemon of all time is the Alolan Raichu. Yes, me too. You know what I mean? Me too, yeah. It's a, like, it surfs on its tail. Like, right. Psychic Electric, which is epic. Dude. Oh, it's oh, it's dope. It yeah. Epic. You can't get cooler than that. Like, and it's a cool design, which is why right. I was happy to see it in Pokemon Snap. Mm -hmm. I'm all for that kind of stuff, dude. I want to see yes. more of it. Like, give me more. Show right. me, because, like, this is the thing. It's all... A big part of Pokemon is evolution, which yes. uh, I have a, actually forget what I was going to say. So the great Charlotte had a great had a great line when we were ha having a discussion the other night where huh. it was like, isn't it funny that Pokemon, a series based around evolution, was reluctant to evolve itself all this time? Yeah. And isn't that strangely in line with their mascot, Pikachu? who refuses to evolve. Mm. He's like, mm. there's, it, you know, there's this weird thing going on. That's there genius. Yeah, That's she, really genius. She thought that up and it kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow. Yeah, no, there's oh, even though it's all about evolution, whether when you look at like Ash's Pokemon in the games, there's always wow. kind of a reluctancy to evolution. Yeah. Like, we're casting aside now. It's now it's right. time to evolve. Right. And it's funny because now one of the, the I think, probably the one of the biggest games in pokemon history that's about to come up i mean this game is historic but now it's like you know you're talking about evolution but now we're going back <laughs> yeah and it's going to be one of the biggest things yeah yeah dude it's so <laughs> dude it's so it, i'm that's blown away because really cool. i was ready dude i was ready yes. to just buy 
Pokemon mm-hmm. Gen 9, Gen 10, Gen 11, Gen yes. 12. I, we all would have lined up. We all would have, right. like, you know what I mean? With all the complaining we do, like, Definitely. Sword and Shield, Boycott Sword and Shield, one of the best selling Pokemon games of all time, if not the best selling Pokemon game right. of all time. I don't have yes. the numbers, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I know it's one of the best selling Switch games, but it's yes. like, look, we all would have lined up. They didn't, I, I'm not trying to pat them on the back for doing right. what they should have done, but it's like, they didn't have to do it. Like, yeah. they could have just kept doing what they were doing, and we all right. would have. We all would have had our memories and had our fun. <laughs> Again, I put 120 hours into Sword and Right. Shield, yeah. I mean? But well, they're so going for it. That's, that's the thing. I mean, Pokemon, it's like gotten to the point. It's so big. It's like, it's like think about how many games, like how many games they're selling with all the, the products they make. Right. So it's like, they, you know, back then they were just solely on the games. And I know Sword and Shield did better than Diamond and Pearl, the originals. It did better than, uh, did better than Sun and Moon, I think. It did better, yeah. It, it did a lot better, but I'll it actually it, it did better than Soul Silver. Sorry, not Soul Silver. Pokemon Heart Gold and or sorry, Pokemon Gold and Silver. They did really? better than them. So I think it's the second best selling Pokemon game. All right, we're gonna. I got it. Check this out. We're, we're See if I'm this. right. So the highest selling one. This is as of December 2020. So things okay. have been updated since. Yes. But let's go. As of December 2020. The number one selling Pokemon game is red, red right. green, and blue at 31.38 million copies. Yep. Yep. Number two, gold and silver at 23.1 million copies. And coming okay. in at number three is sword and shield at 20 million copies above oh, diamond and pearls, 17 million geez, copies. Man. But now I want to look up Pokemon sword and shields sales as of like right now. Okay. I could be wrong. I think, think it beat gold and silver i think you're right okay we've gotten over 21 million as of may 6th so let's just take that and roll with it it's at 21 million sales right now which puts it a little bit behind gold and silver right but when it's all said and done it's very possible this is the second best selling pokemon game of all time and i don't think it's an accident if i'm being honest like no was it the greatest game no Mm -hmm. Uh, but right having something like the wild area yeah. and having Pokemon on console. We're like, mm-hmm. like, that's the thing. Not only is, was the wild area cool, but like the fact that, how do I put this? This seemed like the most co-op friendly yes. Pokemon game in existence. The fact that my, me, my fiance and my cousins, we all got yeah. in one room and we were all hunting legendaries together. That's amazing. All doing these hordes together. And it's like, yeah. wow, I've never felt this. I've always either been trading with my colleagues and friends right. or battling them. But right. now we work together. Yes. And that's new. That's yeah. fresh. So as much flack as Sword and Shield gets, it did bring a lot of new and fresh things it did. into the franchise yes. that Game Freak is doubling down on now. Mm-hmm. And everyone's patting them on the back for doubling right. down on them now. And yes. now I'm compelled to bring up your tweet where you're like, everyone who's hyped, <laughs> you know, something like everyone who's hyped about Arceus should be thanking Sword and Shield. Oh, I said, I think I said um we should be thank we should be thanking Sword and Shield for this presents. And yes. I was, yeah, and I was like, I and I, I I, think it is. And it's like, what's another example? The Wii U with the Switch, you know? It's, it's shit has to happen to get better, yeah. right? And it's like, it's not just Game Freak learning. I mean, it's Nintendo too. I mean, well, yeah. You know, it, like they have a huge, too. they have a huge say in these games and stuff. But um, I think, I, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit one day, but it's like, where do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's going to be like one of the best selling games on the Switch? Or what do you think is going to happen? Let's, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to, we're going to do this now. Best selling okay. games on the Switch Mario Kart, Animal Crossing, Zelda, I think. Gonna, probably. Maybe? Here we go. Here we go. Number one is Mario Kart at 37 million copies. Number two is Animal Crossing at 33 million copies. Phew. Smash at 24 million copies. Smash. <laughs> yep. And Breath of the Wild at 23 million copies. And then wow. at number five, Wow. Sword and Shield outsold Mario Odyssey. Wow. Man, dude. I didn't expect that. I didn't know that. That's crazy. That that's is crazy. insane. But wow. here's the thing. All right, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say it. All right. If Arceus comes through. Arceus, excuse me. If it comes through and it's a good game, the good game we all want. Right. I think it outsells Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I, I think it could even outsell Smash because I'm looking at Sword yes. and Shield, right? 
which is mm-hmm. sitting at near 22 million copies, right? Mm-hmm. 22 million copies on a Jeez. game that, that divided the fan base, which it, it <laughs> divided the fan divided base. The fan base. <laughs> Like, you know, some people were upset I love and they had a right to be upset. They didn't get what right. they wanted. And as a yeah. customer, you have the right to ask for what you want. And right. if the company doesn't give it to you, don't buy their fucking product. Exactly. You vote exactly. with your dollar. So if you withheld your money because Sword and Shield wasn't what you wanted, good for you. I'm glad. Yeah. You right. As opposed to like, <laughs> I would much prefer that. Like, I would much prefer that as opposed to the person who bitches endlessly in YouTube comment sections and buys the game anyway. Because like, no. shut up. It's just like, stop. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Right, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so here's Sword and Shield, where there was mm-hmm. a number of Pokemon game fans who were not down for this. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Hmm. I'm what wondering how much these sales were inflated by people probably like you and I who bought both Sword and Shield. Yeah. Because I'm looking because now I'm looking at Let's Go, which sold 13 million copies. So the mm-hmm. real so this is it is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge because I it didn't occur to me because there are a number of people who buy both copies. Right. And like you're saying, mm-hmm. Ar- Arceus is just one version, one copy. Yeah. But I'm gonna stand by my prediction that if this mm-hmm. game comes through, I think it eventually outsells Sword and Shield and may very well outsell Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Because again. Sword and Shield was a game where not everyone was super hyped, but it looks mm-hmm. like everyone is down for Arceus. Even people who aren't necessarily Pokemon fans or who right. might have tapped out of Pokemon are mm-hmm. now going, hmm, that might be a good point to jump back in. Yeah. That looks fun. Definitely. So it's got a bit of a challenge because it doesn't have that double that double copy. But right. I do think I do think it's gonna compete. I think at the very least. It'll be a top 10 selling game on Switch, the mm-hmm. number which we need it because the yeah. 10th best selling game on Switch is Ring Fit Adventure. I was going to say, I think that is. Yeah. At 11 million <laughs> copies, which I'm not knocking it. I'm sure it's a right. great time. Right. But it's like, it's like, bro, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. But this is a cool it's, to look at. It is kind of interesting because, I mean, one game in particular that particular that stands out to me is like what's a game that people have been wanting for years and nintendo hasn't been like so talky talky about until like the past year mm-hmm. it's animal crossing people who play animal crossing never owned a switch or a switch light but they bought one just to play the game and i think people have been wanting a game like that for years right people who don't even play games mm-hmm. have been wanting something like that you know And I think it's just really interesting with how long people have wanted a Pokemon game like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, these companies, like they do what they want, but man, they, they know what the people want too. And, um, this is really funny. I, um, I saw an interview with, with Jerry Seinfeld. He said, my number one rule is to not give the people what they want. (laughs) And I was like, Hmm. <laughs> I was like, that's actually kind of interesting. He's like, no reunions. No, we're not doing that. Um, but it's like, you know, they're fine. The Pokemon company and Nintendo, they're finally giving the fans what they want. And I think, you know, something as basic as that at the end of the day is going to really affect like how much this sells. And so. I, think, I think one thing it has going against it, though, is mm-hmm. it just misses the holiday season. But right. I think that's what Diamond and Pearl are for. I think Diamond right. and Pearl's for the holiday season because I think they're so I think they're so confident in what they have in Arceus. Yeah. That, that they're just they're, they're like it doesn't need a holiday season. It doesn't need yeah. two versions. We're we're giving them the Pokemon game they've always wanted. And right. I think, I think I really think you see it. I really think you see a big turnout for this game. Right. I think it's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to change the way people look at Pokemon. Yeah, so people look at Pokemon. They still look at it as baby's first RPG. They right. look at it as like, oh, that's you know every like you know even myself. It's like I don't go to it, and I and I feel like this is where a lot of people get hung up on Pokemon. And yes. I don't blame them for being this way. But a lot of mm-hmm. people, this is one of if not one of the only primary games they play for a lot of people who play Pokemon. So right. they're going to Pokemon mm-hmm. for that next gen experience. Right. right? Now mm-hmm. I've never gone to I've never really gone to Pokemon for that, which is why I've been able to jump into the games and essentially not complain because if right. i wanted my next gen experience i'll book a, i'll boot up seven remake or breath of the wild and i can get it yeah because those are the games that i really really love definitely However, now with arceus mm-hmm. i think what it might do 
I think what it might do is even take someone like myself who plays these games, loves these games, but might make me like be like, wow, I really am a Pokemon fan again. Right. You know what I yes. am? You know, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. A hundred percent. And I think the, I think one thing for a lot of these games that sold incredibly well, like especially for Animal Crossing is, a, is the timing of the game's release. And I think for the Pokemon company, there's no time in their history to make a game like this and to sell it. Right. So when they were working on the on the 3ds stuff you know they're 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 first approaching you know like 3d graphics and stuff like that mm-hmm. no matter what the level there's it's still new to them and right. uh i think it's like you know the switch is sold so well even though they thought it wasn't it was going to be a flop right mm-hmm. um but i think for them you know it's been it's been over four years look at everybody who has these switch consoles they we're all more. waiting for a new like next gen experience right exactly like, we're all waiting like yeah we got metroid dread coming and we got right. diamond and pearl and like right. all those things and like you know world ends with you just came out right but, like we're really look you buy nintendo because you love the first party could have played world mm-hmm. ends with you on playstation people exactly. buy nintendo because they love these first party properties. they got the games bro right yeah but like let's think about it. we don't have a release date for breath of the wild we don't mm-hmm. have a release date for metroid prime 4 we don't there's no new like mario game in sight you know, mm-hmm. it's like where where are we gonna get this first first right? Oh God, what is the word I'm looking for? First party property. Yeah. Where is it? And yeah. January, it stands on an island on its own. Yes. People like me are starving for a new Switch game. Yeah. It's gonna hit. It's hitting at just the right time. Yeah, definitely. And it's 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 just so crazy because I'm like, oh man, that's that's like pretty soon. Like January's coming yeah. up. You know, it's gonna be here fast. But then you think about it, and it's like, oh wait, didn't they say like? The new like Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be out sometime in 2022. And then you start to see it's like, ah, they're really like they would they would never sell those two games together. And right. Maybe that's why there hasn't been a lot of Breath of the Wild 2 talk is they're trying to let. Yeah. Ramp up a little bit. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, that's that's me being a little optimistic because I'm dying for the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. we are we are running up on time here a little bit. Was yeah. there anything we haven't spoken about yet that you wanted to talk about in particular? I was kind of curious for um because I know we have like these new forms Pokemon. And I, I think we're there was actually a particular leak that was real that came out right before the first showing of Legends Arceus. Um and it actually showed like you on the back of a pokemon that was climbing up a mountain and it looks to me like it's um what you know what's c dot's final evolution nuzly for something like that it looks yeah. like a, a form of that pokemon so i think we're gonna definitely i think we might get like an another trailer for this game i, I don't know if we're, yeah i think we're gonna get one more i don't know if we're gonna get a presents um I was curious to ask you, do you think we're going to get mega evolutions for the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Here's my first question to you, Firefax. <laughs> were they in the original Diamond and Pearl? They were not. Then no. Oh. That's my prediction. Good. They said faithful, that was really they good. Said faithful re- <laughs> <laughs> That's they said so true. Remake, yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. I'm going to take them at their word. If mega evolutions are there, I'm hyped. But I'm taking Game right. Freak at their word faithful evolution this is what i mean and like every fan base is guilty of this temper your expectations people right temper your expectations exactly not every game is going to be the 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 pinnacle of gaming you know what i mean exactly right take things as they are and if they're trash they're trash but sometimes it's gold just take things as they are right what i would say and whatever like even if like you know i mean bad games like I don't know. It's it's like companies are also still learning. Like this yeah. is to me, I think everyone's just shocked that they're doing something like this. But I mean, they they've known that they've had the potential for this and they've and, had to do it and they've had. I mean, it's it's only a matter of when. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I think one thing that we're that we might see in the future is like I know when the first trailer of this game came out. They said, you know, for a new start of the main line or a new start for the the series. And that's like, oh, are they going to do like different regions 
for games like this too. Like I don't even want to like go down the path, but the thing with these gaming companies is that they work years in development, right? So like when they show the first trailer for Sun and Moon, they were already in development on Sword and Shield knowing about the Switch way yeah. before it was even shown. So I'm just kind of thinking like how how much are these companies relying on these games to do well and like what are they also planning right now? But um, so I, I, I don't know why I kind of think about that a lot, but I think like I'm buying all the games. I'm buying Diamond, like Brilliant Diamond I'm, and Shining I'm in, Pearl. I'm in, I'm in yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally in. I think it's going to get a lot, like you were saying, a lot of new people in the series, you know? I think so too, because you brought it up. There's a lot of new Switch owners out there who only bought it for Animal Crossing and right. they're bored of Animal Crossing right now. Yeah, so dude. The, the iron's hot. It's time to strike. Um, right. But I think it's time for us to wrap it up. But before Definitely. we do, before we do, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I should have said it in the beginning. I should have said it in the beginning. But if you don't follow Treehouse oh, you're fine. on YouTube and Twitch, the Lodge can't do business. With you. <laughs> I love that. It's that simple. If you don't can't follow do the homies, I don't do business with you. But don't I wanna, do business. <laughs> but I want to be real. I know. You know, you're just starting up your YouTube channel and ramping that up. Mm. But dude, you've been absolutely crushing it on Twitch. Oh, I think thanks, you're man. I think you're a legit inspiration for anyone who wants to try and do these things and do them mm. at a high level. Seeing you grow and seeing your community explode mm. and seeing the waves of support, people coming out for you. It, it's really a marvel to watch. I would encourage mm. everyone to follow Treehouse on Twitch. If you like Smash, if you like Pokemon, then he's right up your alley, dude. <laughs> You even ripped a little Kingdom Hearts melody in memory. I know there's a lot of you on this <laughs> channel who love that. Like, get in there, dude. Like, I don't know if you want oh, to thanks, plug man. yourself any further, but like, I can't sing your praises enough. Oh, I think, thanks, I think, man. I think it's only just the beginning for you, mm. and I'm excited to see where it goes. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. And I'm just saying, you know, if you can't. There's their homies. If you don't, if you don't do business with them, I can't, I can't talk to you. I can't. I can't. That's just it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. These yeah, that's rules. it. <laughs> but thanks, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. And um, look, for, you know, guys who are watching, look forward to the future. Me and Landy are definitely going to maybe even do some more stuff together. And oh, yeah. just, he's the absolute homie. And thank you again for just having me on and all the support, my dude. I dude, really appreciate it. Anytime it's been, it's been quite a ride, right? Ever since you jumped into wild. my Smash stream, which, which feels like a year ago at this point. But and PB was in it. I remember and that. PB was in it. No, the whole whole squad. We were squatted up. But yeah, dude, it's Amazing. it's come a long way. I'm happy to see where it is. And uh, thanks, man. Yeah, dude. We're listen. We're gonna have to reconvene. A lot, of, Poke, a lot of Pokemon stuff happening. So a lot of stuff going we'll have through. Have to reconvene, man. and you know, maybe we can do some like live stream battles or would live love stream. it we could have some fun with that but love i do want to i do want to let you go um sickos normies ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in please follow treehouse and we will see all of you on the next one peace peace